In the previous lecture, we worked through the definition of matrix multiplication, and now in this lecture we're going to talk about some properties of this new operation that we've defined. So we've got several of the properties listed here, and we want to try to talk about not only the properties that matrix multiplication has in and of itself, but also how it interacts with the other matrix operations that we've talked about. So the first property that we see here is that matrix multiplication is associative. So if we have three matrices multiplied together, it doesn't matter if we multiply the second and the third one together first, and then multiply the first one, or if we group the parentheses around the first and second. And then the second and third properties are both distributive properties. And these tell us how matrix multiplication interacts with matrix addition. The fourth property here is a kind of associativity, but it tells us that when we have a scalar multiple, we can multiply the matrices together and then multiply the scalar, or we can multiply the scalar by the first matrix and then multiply the second matrix, or we can even multiply the scalar by the second matrix and multiply the first matrix. And the last property here talks about a multiplicative identity. We talked about how the zero matrix is an additive identity for matrices, but the identity matrix, the I matrix, is a multiplicative identity. And notice that it's IM if I multiply on the left, but it's IN if I multiply on the right, and here we're assuming that A is a M by N matrix. And this is because, remember, for matrix multiplication to be defined, the number of columns of the first matrix has to equal the number of rows of the second matrix. Now we could walk through proofs of all of these properties. I'm just going to do the first one for you just to give you a sense of how this would go. So we're going to write out the actual columns of the matrix of C. So remember what we're proving here is that A times B times C is equal to A times B times C. That's associativity for matrix multiplication. So we're going to write out the columns of the, ve of the matrix C here, the vectors C1, C2 through Cp. And then remember our, our definition of matrix multiplication is that to multiply the matrix B times C, is to simply multiply the matrix B times each of the columns of the matrix C individually. But now if we multiply by A, then that's multiplying by A all of the columns of the product matrix that we just had. Now here's the key step. We defined a matrix multiplication so that for any vector x, A times B times x was the same as A times B times x. That's why matrix multiplication has this kind of odd unusual definition. It was to make this happen. And so because of that, we're going to use that to rewrite A times B times C1 as ABC1, similarly ABC2, and so on. But that's what we would get if we multiplied the matrix AB times the matrix C, because that's AB times each of the columns of C. So that checks and shows us that we have associativity. Now you might notice that something that was missing from the list that we just talked about is commutativity. And it turns out that matrix multiplication is not commutative. In general, it's not true, given two matrices, that A times B equals B times A. First of all, sometimes A times B is defined, whereas B times A is not defined, or vice versa. If the sizes of the matrices don't match up, sometimes one product is defined and the other product isn't. But if both matrices are square, in this case both of these matrices A and B are 3 by 3, then both A times B and B times A are defined, but notice that they're not the same matrix at all. They're completely different. So this is an important fact to keep in mind in general that matrix multiplication is not commutative. Sometimes, occasionally, it will turn out that A times B equals B times A for specific matrices A and B, but in general, it's not true. A couple other things that are not true that are sort of typical algebraic rules that we would like to use when we're talking about numbers, that, but these things don't work for matrices, is cancellation. So for example, if AB equals AC, we cannot conclude that B equals C. We can't cancel the A's from both sides. We can't divide by a matrix. What would that even mean? We barely just defined matrix multiplication, so certainly we don't have anything called matrix division. And we also don't have the nice property of zero that we have when we're talking about numbers. So if you have two matrices and you multiply them together and you get the zero matrix, it's not in general true that one of the matrices has to itself be the zero matrix. Now a little bit of notation here. If we multiply a square matrix by itself, and again the matrix would have to be square here for this to make sense. Because remember, when we take a matrix m by n, and if we want to multiply it by itself m by n, these two numbers 
have to match. In other words, m and n have to be the same, and so we have to be talking about a square matrix. But when we're talking about a square matrix, we can multiply it by itself multiple times, and so a nice shorthand for that is to write it in exponential notation. So a to the k power, that just means a multiplied by itself k times. And so a to the first is just by definition a itself. And a to the zero is the n by n identity matrix, i sub n. And that's sort of analogous to the idea that when you raise a number to the zero power, you get one. And the identity matrix is kind of like the one of matrix multiplication. It's the number that when you multiply by it, nothing happens. Another operation we'll sometimes do with matrices is called transpose. So the transpose of a matrix, which you write AT, is going to be a matrix whose columns are formed from the rows of A. So if you notice here, we've got a row, 3, 0, negative 4, and then in A transpose, that row becomes a column, 3, 0, negative 4. And we have a row, 1, negative 2, 5, and in the transpose matrix, that becomes a column, 1, negative 2, 5. So transpose has some nice properties that interact with the things that we've already talked about. First of all, if we take two transposes, if we transpose a matrix twice, that just gives us back to the matrix that we started with. If we add two matrices and then take the transpose, that's the same as taking the two transposes and adding the results. If we multiply a matrix by a scalar and then take a transpose, well, then it doesn't matter whether we multiply the scalar before we do the transpose or after. And now this last one, that's going to be one that may seem a little bit surprising. So if we take the product of two matrices and take the transpose, it is the product of the transposes, but in the opposite order. It's B transpose times A transpose. So that might seem a little bit surprising, but let's run through an example and see why that might be true. So here we have two matrices. A is 2 by 2, and B is 2 by 3. So AB exists because the number of columns of the first matrix matches the number of rows of the second matrix. So let's figure out what AB is, and then we'll figure out what AB transpose is. So AB is going to be 2 by 3, and when we multiply these two matrices out, here's what we get. And so then AB transpose is just going to be taking the rows of that matrix and turning them into columns, and so we get negative 3, 1, 3 as the first column of our matrix AB transpose, and negative 4, 0, 6 as the second column. All right, now let's look at A transpose and B transpose. So I'm going to write B transpose first and A transpose second. So B transpose is going to be negative 2, 0, 3 as the first column, 1, negative 1, 0 as the second column. A transpose is going to be 1, negative 1 as the first column, and 2, 0 as the second column. So notice that B transpose is 3 by 2, and A transpose is 2 by 2. So if you were thinking that a, B transpose should be A transpose, B transpose. Well, A transpose, B transpose, in this example, isn't even defined. It's not possible to multiply A transpose by B transpose in that order, because the number of columns of A transpose is 2, but the number of rows of B transpose is 3. So it's not even possible to do that multiplication, much less check to see if it's actually equal to the thing that we got before. So the only thing that we can do to multiply these two matrices is to multiply them in the order B transpose, A transpose. So let's look at what we did to get the row 1, column 1 entry of AB transpose. Well, that was the same as the row 1, column 1 entry of AB. And the way that we got that was by going across the first row of the matrix A and down the first column of the matrix B. We multiplied 1 by negative 2 and negative 1 by 1, added those results together, and we got negative 3. So now what are we going to do to figure out the row 1, column 1 entry of B transpose, A transpose? Well, we're going to go across the first row of B transpose and down the first column of A transpose. But those are the same products and the same numbers that we did when we figured out that entry of A, B transpose. It's going to be negative 2 times 1 plus 1 times negative 1, which is going to give us negative 3. So it's the same products of the same numbers in the same order. It's just that when we took the transposes, rows became columns and columns became rows. And when we use our row-column method for multiplying two matrices, well, we want to do rows of the first matrix and columns of the second matrix. But to match up what we did before, we need the rows of A and the columns of B. 
So that's the rows of B transpose and the columns of A transpose. So we have to put B transpose first if we want to use its rows. And so when we work all this out, we do in fact get the exact same numbers in the exact same positions. So that's not a proof, but hopefully it illustrates a little bit about why this sort of strange looking identity works the way that it does. Now, because matrix multiplication is a little bit tedious, it's a lot of, you know, multiply this by this and this by this, and it's a lot of arithmetic. Um, very often we want to use technology to make this go a little bit more smoothly. So in this course, we're using Mathematica. And in Mathematica, there's a couple things we need to keep in mind when we want to multiply two matrices. So first of all, we enter matrices into Mathematica by representing them as lists of lists. So we use curly brackets to write lists. And so when we're writing a matrix, we wrote uh, two curly brackets, and then whatever the entries of row one are, comma, another set of curly brackets, the entries of row two, et cetera, et cetera. And then we put another big set of curly brackets when we're done entering those rows. If we want the Mathematica to give us an output that actually looks like a matrix, we can use the function matrix form, which is just a visual modification. It's not something we want to work with when we do calculations. It's just saying, hey, I've got a matrix and I want to be able to look at it and make it look like a matrix. So we don't want to use matrix form in, the, in addition to calculations. We want to use it after we're done with our calculations and we want to see what the result looks like. Now, when we want to multiply two matrices in Mathematica, we do not use the multiplication symbol. We use the period symbol or the dot symbol. So if we want to multiply two matrices, it's a dot b, not a times b. So what a times b with the asterisk is going to multiply the corresponding entries of a and b. So in other words, it's going to take the row 1, column 1 entry of A and multiply it by the row 1, column 1 entry of B, and so on. And that's only going to be defined when A and B are the same size, which is not at all what we do when we talk about our definition of matrix multiplication. But that's what Mathematica will interpret you wanting if you type A star B. It's probably going to be a mistake you're going to make a few times until you get used to the dot notation, but just be aware um, that A star B is not at all what you want when you want to do the product of two matrices in Mathematica.